through my educational career, I focused largely on American history. I was a political science major and an undergraduate, and I went on to, uh, to study history and philosophy, primarily American history and philosophy uh, through the masters and the doctoral programs, and I thought I knew a thing or two. Now, much to my surprise, as I was um, gathering antiquarian resources as a young dad to prepare for the education of my own children, I had a shock when I realized that I didn't even know who the first president of the United States was. I mean, dumb me, I thought it was George Washington. I'd never actually done the math. I mean, George Washington becomes the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the new Continental uh, Congress in 1775. There had already been a functioning, autonomous, independent uh, government of the United Colonies for a year and a half prior to that. And then that government proceeded to work its way through a war with the world's greatest power. Over the course of the next 15 years, with duly elected governments and duly elected presidents, under three different constitutional charters, the last of them being the Articles of Confederation. And I realized that in all of my study and all of my advanced degrees, I didn't know anything about that period. Now, I'd run across a couple of chapters on the Articles of Confederation in one class at one time, but I never actually read the Articles of Confederation. And so when I discovered that there were 16 presidential administrations prior to George Washington, I thought to myself, I've been robbed. Payne Randolph was the first president of the United States. Payne Randolph of Virginia. He uh, was born in 1723. He died in 1775 after serving two terms as the president of Congress assembled. He was succeeded by Henry Middleton of South Carolina, who served for a year. He was succeeded by John Hancock, who inscribed his massive signature on uh, the Declaration of Independence, uh, not on July 4th, but on July 8th, I've been robbed. <laughs> he was succeeded by Henry Lawrence of South Carolina. He was succeeded by John Jay, who later went on to found the American Bible Society. He was succeeded uh, by Samuel Huntington, and he was succeeded by Thomas McKean, once the uh, aide-de-camp of General Washington, and he was succeeded by John Hanson of Mulberry Grove in Maryland, and he was succeeded by Elias Boudinot of New Jersey, who co-founded the American Bible Society along with his dear friend John Jay, who later then became the first uh, Supreme Court uh, Justice and the, uh, uh, the, the, the first leader of the uh, litigation crew that forged America's first five treaties. He was succeeded by Thomas Mifflin of Pennsylvania. He was succeeded by uh, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia, uh, the patriarch of the great Lees of Virginia. He was succeeded by Nathaniel Gorham of Massachusetts. He was succeeded uh, by the only president of the United States ever born outside the United States, Arthur St. Clair, who was taught to hate the British following the great Battle of Culloden when his beloved Scots uh, were defeated by uh, the Duke of Cumberland and those despised Hanoverians from across the pond. And he was succeeded by Cyrus Griffin, and I knew none of this stuff despite having advanced degrees in American history. I was robbed. I could tell you a few stories about 
Yorktown, I could tell you a few stories about Valley Forge. I even had a nifty photograph of George Washington kneeling in the snow on my desk, but I didn't know P. Diddley or Squat about any of the rest of it. 